Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you guys about um, Nature Throid as a medication. And basically, we're going to kind of go over what I've um, summed up as the complete guide to using Nature Throid, and we're going to go over dosing and weight loss and pretty much everything you can think about how and why you would consider using Nature Throid in this video. So um, let's kind of jump in here. Uh, the basic, let's start with what is Nature Throid. So Nature Throid, as many of you probably already know, is a thyroid medication. It contains bioidentical um, hormones, including T4, T3, and actually some T2 and some other thyroid hormones because it is a form of natural desiccated thyroid. Okay, and so the, the form of natural desiccated thyroid, that, that class of medication includes Armor Thyroid, um, WP Thyroid, and of course Nature Thyroid as well. And there are some other variations like um, MP Thyroid and such. Basically, these are um, desiccated forms of thyroid extract, usually porcine derived, um, and they basically take uh, thyroid out, they crush it up, or they take the thyroid gland out of these animals, they thrush it up or uh, crush it up, and um, basically formulate it into a pill. <clears throat> so that's uh, and it's one of those those so-called natural uh, medications. Um, now, why specifically are we focusing on Nature Throid? Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about comparing Armour Thyroid to Nature Throid as we go through this. Uh, but Nature Throid and probably WP Thyroid, in my opinion, are probably two of the best thyroid uh, medications. Uh, I, I, well, let me qualify that statement. They're not the best thyroid medications, but they're the best of the natural desiccated thyroid medications. Um, I actually don't think they're the best thyroid medication, but again, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. Um, so, well, actually, we're going to talk about it right now. So, is Nature Throid better than levothyroxine? That, I would probably say, is generally a true statement. Um, and that's even corroborated by some studies here. So, I've, I've actually provided these studies here for you if you want to take a look. So, um, basically, what they've done is they've compared in a, a double-blind crossover study, um, they've taken patients on levothyroxine, which is a T4-only medication, right, different than Nature Throid, and they've taken patients on Nature Throid, and they kind of compared the results between the two, um, and they found that the majority of people actually preferred um, the, the uh, natural desiccated thyroid extract, okay? And so they're saying in the study that, it, that people that were on natural desiccated thyroid um, had more weight loss um, and that they just had a preference over it. Now, the, the kind of interesting thing is in the study, the author's personal conclusions um, were that this, this therapy did not result in a significant improvement in quality of life. But I think that's, that's kind of interesting because that's just their opinion. And I would pose the question to you, if you had more weight loss by switching thyroid medication, would your quality of life improve? And I think the answer to that is probably yes. So I think that's kind of a, a, a I'm, I'm not really sure why that, that conclusion was drawn, but um, you know, because patients obviously preferred it more and had more weight loss, which in my opinion is, is, does result in improvement of quality of life. So don't take uh, what these studies are saying at face value. You kind of have to infer a little bit deeper into them, okay? So um, is it better than level thyroxine bottom line? Yeah, probably, and that has to do with the fact that uh, Nature Throid does contain more T3 uh, or just actually contains some T3 because level thyroxine contains none, um, right? And uh, let's talk about why that's important and why you should consider switching to Nature Throid um, for various reasons, including if you're on level of thyroxine and it's not working. So basically, uh, nowadays in uh, my practice, I usually, very rarely do I ever start with a T4-only thyroid medication. A part of the reason has to do with the fact that the majority of patients come to me on uh, level of thyroxine and it's uh, you know obviously not working. But I have an equal, well, maybe not an equal, but a, a significant amount of patients who come to me already on some form of NDT with a suppressed TSH and still feeling crappy. And so we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, but the bottom line for you is, should you consider switching? And he here's, here's kind of the general guidelines that I've provided as to whether or not you should consider this. So first of all, if you are a patient who has not felt better on T4-only medications like Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or Tyrosine, that might be an indication that you should switch, right? Um, so that's one option. Uh, patients who have mild weight problems, okay? And I'm, I'm defining mild, mild weight problems as about 10 to 20 pounds overweight. Now, some thyroid patients, well, I would say most thyroid patients deal with weight issues um, for some reason, and that, we're not gonna go over all that today. I'll do another video on that entirely because it's a kind of a complex problem. But if you don't have, if you don't have a tremendous amount of weight to lose, you may benefit from um, switching to Nature Throid. Now I say that if you, if you have more weight than let's say 10 to 20 pounds, you're probably someone, be, by virtue of the hormone imbalances that occur with that amount of weight, 
that will need more intensive therapy, usually T3 and actually some other hormonal therapy. So that's why I'm making that distinction of mild versus sort of moderate, um, uh, you know, weight gain here. Um, so that's another reason. Um, another one would be um, patients who have not been on medication before. So this is kind of interesting and in what I went back to before. Uh, in my opinion, it, it's it's a safe it's it's safe to to start someone out on Nature Throid. You don't have to necessarily fail T4 first, which I think is generally the standard of care for a lot of uh, general practitioners and even endocrinologists, right? So they will the standard of care is to start you on T4 medication no matter what. Always, very rarely do they ever switch to Nature Throid. And I'm saying. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can start with Nature Throid and, and it works, you know, quite well. Okay, so that's another reason. Um, and then another thing would be patients who have low free T3 and low free T4, but relatively normal reverse T3 levels. So this we're kind of getting a little nuanced and a little more complex than maybe some of you are aware of. But what I'm trying to get out here is that you don't want to provide a patient who has high reverse T3 levels more T4, T4 okay? And even though Nature Throid does contain some T3 or um, some T3 in it, it's still the majority of it, about 80% or so. Uh, I'm not doing the math while I'm talking to you guys here, but about 80% T4 in it. So if you have higher levels of reverse T3, you're probably not going to want to just dump on more NT NDT, which still contains about 80% T4. And again, that's a little more nuanced. So um, if, if that's confusing to you, what I'd recommend is you kind of go through this, this article a little bit in detail, read about reverse T3, read about normal thyroid physiology, the importance of free T3, etc., and that will kind of get you up to speed. So um, here's a couple uh, tips that I've come up with um, you know, for patients that are switching from level, level thyroxine to nature throid to help with that transition because believe it or not, um, and, and you'll see if you pay attention to, the, to this post, if you just go and look through the comments, you'll see it littered with patients who have had problems with the switch. And actually, believe it or not, that's not uncommon. Okay, many patients, it's not just you, you switch from level thyroxine right over to NDT or nature throid and then, you know, boom, your life is perfect. In fact, that, that, that happens, but maybe 40% of the time, right? So the other 60% of the time, there's a couple bumps that you have to work through. So number one is to titrate your dose slowly. Okay, so the importance here is that, as I mentioned, Nature Throid does contain some T3, and T3 is the active thyroid hormone in your body, all right? And generally, the symptoms that many patients experience if they titrate, and by the way, titrate just means to increase your dose, okay? If, if that's confusing to you, I just wanna elaborate there. So patients who titrate their dose too quickly or patients who start at a very high dose. So let's say you go from 150 mics of uh, level thyroxine to, you know, whatever, three grains of, of um, nature throid, you're going to get hit with more T3 than your body's probably been used to in a very long time. And that may cause the majority of these symptoms. And usually these symptoms result from that T3. And your body's just not used to it. It doesn't mean you don't need it. It just means that you need to kind of go slow. So symptoms of that include increased anxiety or agitation. I, I kind of define this as just feeling jittery. That's, that's the way that patients describe it to me. You may get heart palpitations um, or a rapid heartbeat. Uh, you may have heat intolerance or hot flashes even. You may have just an uneasy feeling or not feeling well or you know just feeling worse overall. You may say your hypothyroid symptoms are coming back, right? Because you know your thyroid is in balance constantly, right? Too little is, is a problem, but also too much is a problem, okay? Um, paradoxically, these patients actually somehow, you know, have increased fatigue. And then the other one that they, that I'll get from patients a lot is dizziness or a sensation of being lightheaded. Okay. And generally these are symptoms of, well, generally it's from the T3, but it also could be you reacting to an inactive ingredient, which we'll go over a little bit, a little bit lower before. Um, I do talk about how to kind of start, you'll start really low and then kind of how to do that titration schedule. So, you know, I'll let you guys read through that, but I just want to give you the gist of this. Um, the second thing is you really need to be cognizant of your dose, okay? Um, and here's, here's kind of a classic example of what I'll see from, from providers who aren't really up to date on the, this, uh, this new kind of treatment paradigm of, of, of hypothyroidism. So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, you're on 100 micrograms of, of T4, level thyroxine, synthroid, tyrosine, whatever it is. And they say, okay, I'm going to switch you to 65 milligrams of nature throid, right? And then you do that and you feel worse, okay? You, generally, you feel worse. And um, initially... And then they check your blood work because you're feeling worse and they go, oh my gosh, look, your TSH just spiked up. And then they use that as a reason to say that the medication doesn't work or that the levels are unstable. And that's not what's happening at all. The problem here is that patient, uh, physicians, providers, especially if they're not used to using these medications, don't understand the physiology of how T3 affects 
your TSH level compared to T4. So any little amount of T3 drops your TSH about, about three to four times faster than T4 only would, okay? So um, generally, they're a little bit scared of using the T3, which means that they underdose you a little bit initially. So I have a dosing guide in here um, that will kind of show you basic uh, general equivalence from going from T4 to, to uh, NDT. Now, this isn't 100%, but it kind of gives you an idea of what you may need and why. Now, you have to kind of put this into perspective with how your body, body is tolerating the T3 and so forth. But it does provide you kind of a nice starting point to, to determine, um, am I even close to where I should be, right? Because a drop or a rise in your TSH if you're switching medications just means that your dose is not high enough. It doesn't mean that the medication didn't work for you because, it you know, it's silly to, it, the same logic would apply if they put you on T4. If your TSH went higher, they'd say, oh, well, let's increase your dose of T4. But for some reason, that lo logic falls short when, they switch you to NDT and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Let's go back to T4. Well, no, that's silly. Just increase your dose of the NDT, especially if you're feeling um, a little bit worse as well. The second thing is you really need to monitor your symptoms. Um, and, and basically what I'm saying here is because of this, uh, because of the, the treatment paradigm, you really need to pay attention to the symptoms because the lab test might not uh, be the be the best way to monitor these. I, I don't want to go into too much detail here because it can be, get kind of confusing, but just pay attention to your hypothyroid symptoms, your body temperature, your pulse rate, etc., and that will help guide you more than your blood test will, at least initially upon switching, okay? Another question I get all the time is, will Nature Throid help me lose weight? Um, and again, this is a little more complex question, but generally the answer is uh, no, but I would say sometimes it's also maybe all right, and the reason for that is hypothyroidism by itself as a hormonal imbalance generally only accounts for about 10 to 20 pounds of extra weight that you have on your body, all right? And, but you may be 50 pounds overweight, right? So that means that 10 to 20 of that is only due to your thyroid. So where is the other 40 or, you know, 30 to 40 pounds coming from? That's coming from other hormone imbalances. And the problem is when you change someone's thyroid medication, all you're doing is fixing the thyroid. You're not fixing the other hormone imbalances that occur as a result of being in a hypothyroid state. So you really need to kind of compartmentalize these different hormone imbalances and treat them. Well, you really want to treat them all at once, but you need to consider them as individuals and you need to treat them accordingly, okay? So that's part of the reason. Now, do some people lose weight when they switch to NDT? Yes, of course they do. Um, and part of that reason has to do with some of that weight gain is due to the reduction in your basal metabolic rate. Um, as a result of low hot thyroid in your body, right? But that doesn't account for all weight, and that's, that's a distinction I want to make to you guys right now. So I want you to consider that T3 as a thyroid hormone influences your mitochondria, and your mitochondria are, are the um, organelles inside of each of your cells that produce energy in your body, okay? And that energy is usually the, uh, is given off as heat, and the, the more energy you have, the more heat you have, the, more, the higher your basal metabolic rate will be, which means your metabolism is higher, which means you burn more calories at rest, which means you'll lose weight. So it's a, it's a, you know, a little bit complex in terms of how it works, but, you know, some people may have weight loss, some people won't. I would say the majority probably won't, but a good 30% may lose 10 to 20 pounds. Okay, um, next up is how to get Nature Throid. So if you're, you know, no doubt you've heard great stories about it, and at least, at the very least, most patients want to try it, all right? Or even though they, they usually falsely think that it will be the cure to everything that they, all of their problems, that's not necessarily true. However, they do stand to benefit quite a bit from switching. And here's kind of the deal. Um, it's going to be difficult to get this medication from your primary care provider, or, well, especially your endocrinologist. You might have more luck with your primary care provider, which means that you might have to look um, outside of the insurance model. Okay. And what I mean by that, and I'll just explain it briefly here, is that within the insurance model, meaning doctors who take insurance, they generally follow what is called the standard of care, okay? And the standard of care um, is to do this. It's, it is so simple, I can just explain it in like two sentences. First of all, they check your TSH. If your TSH is high, you're diagnosed with hypothyroidism, they give you T4, and they lower that TSH, right? And then they base your dosing off of your TSH alone. That's it. It is no more complex than that. That is how all endocrinologists and primary care doctors will treat you. Now, it is way more complex than that if you actually want to feel better, if you want to lose weight, and you know, yada, yada, yada. But trying to convince one of those doctors to treat you in a different way is, is going to be like banging your head against the wall. It's just not going to work that well. So that's why I make the recommendation to seek care from someone who understands what I'm talking about um, and will help you further. And that's probably going to be the single most effective thing that you can do for your health. And I think I even put it in here. Yeah, I say... 
you know, in my opinion, you really can't put a price on feeling healthy and getting your life back, right? So even though you may have to pay a little bit more to get this done, and, and I've even seen people struggle because they're like, well, I have such great insurance. I want to use my insurance. But if your insurance is going to help you, do not waste your time on it. Again, it's not worth living five to 10 years of your life, you know, feeling crappy when all you would have to do is just go out and, you know, change your medication and do some other things and feel better. Um, having said that, I do provide a couple of other uh, resources here. So uh, generally, functional medicine physicians ha are okay with, with prescribing NDT. They don't have the same kind of level of uh, knowledge that I'm talking about to you about T3 and reverse T3 necessarily, but they w that will be a place to get NDT, but realize that some of you may need more than that. Another thing, another place that you might look is integrative medicine. Um, so any doctor that falls kind of under that umbrella term of integrative medicine or functional medicine is going to be much more likely to prescribe you natural desiccated thyroid. Now, you're probably going to have to pay cash for these doctors or, you know, fee for service or whatever it is, but um, you're more likely to get um, healthy using that model than the general model, okay, just so you know. Um, and as a note here, I generally recommend against the use of chiropractic uh, care for managing these issues. The reason for that is, most of you, by the time you're searching and reading uh, for the things that I'm talking about, you're beyond a state where just supplements will help you, right? You need somebody to manage your hormones, to give you those um, bioidentical hormones and to fix the problem. So they, they can be an adjunct to therapy, but I wouldn't use them as your primary source, okay? Um, how much does Nature 3 cost? It's, it's really quite cheap, guys. So if you use goodrx.com, I have the link above here. Um, the cash price for 30 days of one grain is $7.84. Um, that's local to me, but around you, I guarantee you'd be somewhere between four and ten bucks. Like it's very cheap, even if your insurance doesn't cover it. So don't let your doctor use that as an excuse. The insurance isn't going to cover it. It doesn't matter. Just say I'll pay the cash price. Use this coupon. It's seven bucks for a month. Like, don't let that be an excuse for you. Um, what's in Nature Throid? Again, I provided an entire list here. I'll let you guys kind of read through that if you'd like. Um, generally speaking, and what I want to focus on here is that Nature Throid I would consider to be one of the cleaner of the natural desiccated thyroids, meaning that it has fewer inactive ingredients and fillers, especially when compared to, let's say, Armour Thyroid. But it's not the cleanest, right? So WP Thyroid actually has the fewest of all inactive ingredients. So I bring this up to say that if you're on Nature Throid and not doing well, or let's say you're on Armour and not doing well, let's say you switch to Nature Throid, feel a little bit better, but still not great, then in that case, you might consider going to WP Thyroid, which may be, you know, the difference for you. Okay, um, next thing is what to do if Nature Throid isn't working for you. And this is kind of where we get into these more um, esoteric uh, uh, treatment paradigms that, that you really have to that might be beyond even some integrative and functional medicine doctors unless they really focus on this stuff. So if you're taking it, let's say you do, you are on Nature Throid, let's say you think your dose is optimized, yada, 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 et cetera, why, why is it then not working for you? So a couple things may be happening. First, you may still have high reverse T3 levels greater than 15, and you may be suffering from something called thyroid resistance, okay? I provided links so you can go into that. We could talk about this for hours, so I'm not going to, but I provided the, the links for you there. Second thing is you might have leptin resistance, okay? It, leptin resistance is generally going to require more T3 levels, or higher, higher levels of T3, I should say. Um, and so you really ought to be checked for leptin issues if you're not leptin, um, uh, leptin serum leptin levels if you're having issues on Nature Throid. Second thing is any type of insulin, either diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, high insulin, high fasting insulin, you name it, any sort of issue with insulin resistance will make your thyroid medication less effective, okay? The next thing is you have really, really low body temperatures despite being on Nature Throid or NDT. Um, if you have a personal history of bipolar disorder, a strong family history of mental health disorders, or if you have a personal history of fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndromes, the, or chronic fatigue syndrome, sorry. If you fall into any of these categories, you might be a patient who should consider switching to a T3-only medication, okay, like Cytomel, Liothyronine, or Sustain Release T3, or even potentially dropping your dose of NDT and adding on this T3. And again, I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole other thing, but I have provided relevant links for you to kind of go through that and, and really, uh, again, a step-by-step -step, um, guide on kind of how to do that. I do want to take a second here to talk about autoimmune thyroiditis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and natural desiccated thyroid. It is worth mentioning here for a couple reasons. So, I have had, in, in, in my experience, in, in, you know, in, in treating a bunch of patients, I've had a couple examples of patients who have reacted negatively um, when using NDT, especially those with Hashimoto's. And it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And so that's why I say just, just be cautious about it. And you, gotta rec you have to remember that natural desiccated thyroid, even nature thyroid, is porcine derived. All right. And so what that means is it, it does contain some anti antigens within it, right? And it may kind of stimulate your immune system 
if you ingest it because you're ingesting something that even though the name says natural, it's coming from a different animal. And your body needs to recognize the difference between itself and other foreign tissues. And so it may, it may recognize the porcine-derived antigens as non-self and therefore attack, stimulating the immune system. Now, this does happen in some patients and it can result in, in what I, like a, a surge of um, hypothyroid-like symptoms. Your TSH can drop, your antibodies will go sky high. So you just need to be aware of that. Generally, what you can do um, is you can treat your GI, you, generally people like this have low stomach acid and other GI problems, so probably part of this tolerance has to do with what's going on in the GI tract, um, but what you can do is if you switch the GI tract and start low again a little bit later, you usually can um, get back on the medication, okay? Um, the next thing is Nature Thyroid versus Armour Thyroid. In my opinion, I think Nature Thyroid is a little more well tolerated than, let's say, um, armor thyroid. The reason for that is armor thyroid's dose or the uh, fillers and binders have been changed to, in to include less dextrose and more methyl cellulose over time. Um, and methyl cellulose you can kind of think of as a glue. So really the glue delays the absorption and so therefore you may be taking equivalent dosages of armor thyroid and nature thyroid but absorbing less of one over the other, right? So in my opinion it's probably nature thyroid is probably a little superior um, in that regard. But it doesn't mean that there's lots of people who don't feel really good on, on Armour Thyroid. Um, the, the bottom line of this whole, this whole section here is that if you're on Armour Thyroid and not feeling very well, instead of just throwing in the towel and going back to, nature, or going back to the level of thyroxine or T4, what you might consider is just switching to a different form of natural desiccated thyroid in equivalent dosages like Nature Thyroid or WP Thyroid. Okay. Um, the next thing is, uh, let's just go over real quick, is heart palpitations with Nature Thyroid. Yes, these are... Um, pretty common, um, and it, it has to do with the way that your heart tissue and cardiac myocytes react to T3 um, in the body. So let's just let's use a hypothetical example. You take um, two grains of Nature Thyroid first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, and um, two hours later we can expect that your serum levels of that T3 will rise. The serum levels means it's in your blood. It means it's going to hit your cardiac myocytes. It's going to activate the calcium channels within the heart. It's going to increase contract uh, or, or, uh, contractility of the heart and also the heart rate. So you may feel that 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 sensation is felt usually as heart palpitations or a racing heart, right? So that's like the long cascade of events that leads to um, this this symptom. Now, does that mean that you need to not take the medication? Not necessarily, but it might, okay? So heart palpitations by themselves might just be mean that your dose of T3 is too, too high too quickly, but not that, not that you need to lower your dose, you just need to spread it out across the day. So what, I will, what a really easy thing to do in this setting is to simply just cut your dosing in half and split it out throughout the day. That, that's usually enough to help a lot of patients. Um, the other thing might be that if you take your thyroid medication completely at night, that might help you significantly as well. So a lot of hypothyroid patients will, will uh, explain to me that they have um, a rush of, let's say, adrenaline or a rush of heart palpitations or rapid heart rate in the middle of the night, usually 2 to 3 p.m. Now, in my opinion, this is probably related to cortisol levels and the diurnal changes in cortisol throughout the day. So if you take your thyroid medication when your cortisol level is, is at the highest in the morning, it might cause more of these symptoms versus taking it in the evening, which may allow for kind of a more sustained level throughout the day. So that's, there's a couple other things that you can do. And I've written an entire article on how to take thyroid medication correctly that you can kind of check out at that link there. So, um, and that's basically it, guys. So um, I'd love it for you to leave any questions or comments you have below. Um, this is this is kind of in a gist what I would consider the, the guide to using Nature Throid. Um, yes, Nature Throid can be very effective. Um, no, I don't think it's the best thyroid medication, but I do think it can stand to help a lot of people, especially if you're on T4 only medication. So um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this helpful, and uh, I look forward to uh, chatting with you guys again soon.